to Psalms chapter number 45. A couple things this morning. Some years ago I preached from this and uh, I found myself as I was praying for the service this week, asking God to move in the service, trying to look at logistically where we are, uh, what can be a uh, blessing uh, that is God's will for me to minister to you today. I felt the tugging at my heartstrings to come here to Isaiah chapter number 45. And uh, my goal is this, is I love Christmas and I love preaching all the things about the Christmas story. I'm trying to get in there and find truths that are beyond that of uh, just looking at the narratives that the gospel writers give us. Uh, beyond just the prophetic things that were spoken in the Old Testament, I love doing that, uh, finding truth and presenting it to you so that you can unwrap the gift of Jesus Christ. But to start off the Christmas season, I find that my heart is wanting to be drawn to point us not to a Messiah who is coming, but to a risen Messiah. Because that's really what it's about. Uh, I, I love I love the birth of Christ. I love the things that are all around there and how that Sister Susan God takes. And, you know, uh, they thought Sister Rachel he was going to be born in a palace. They thought he was going to come with some type of uh, Caleb political power when he was born that would overtake what was then the Roman government. But God showed that that wasn't his plan. One day he's coming back. And he's going to set up his kingdom. He's not going to set it up in, in, in New York City as the United Nations. But he'll be setting it up in Jerusalem. And he will rule the nations. It won't be a facade. But it will be a reality that God is ruling. And God is in charge. This time he came as a lion as we think about Christmas. Or he, he came as a lamb when we think about Christmas. But when he comes back the second time, he's coming back as a lion. Now what does that mean? That he's not coming uh, 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 in a peaceful way, but he's coming in power and authority. Uh, but I want us to look at not him being born as a baby, but I want us to look at the finished work that he did upon the cross of Calvary. And so David, he is the greatest messianic uh, 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 one to give prophecy in the book of Psalms gives us many messianic prophecies or what that is that in the Old Testament they're pointing direction to Christ's coming and to his not only coming but his dying upon the cross and so those are messianic prophecies and we look Isaiah he falls next in line of giving us prophecies uh, uh, coming uh, second in from the book of Psalms but I want to look at Psalms and what what what, what the uh, the psalmist writes and I want to look at one verse. The Bible says in verse number 8, And all your garments smell of myrrh and cassia out of the ivory places whereby they have made you glad. They smell of myrrh, I'm sorry, and aloes and cassia out of the ivory places whereby they have made you glad. Smell is an amazing thing. I love Sister Tina. Sometimes uh, I'll get the, the smell of fried chicken. Uh, so, so, so many folks, it's still so fried chicken. Sometimes I'll get that fried chicken smell, and it'll take me back to when I was a little boy going to my grandma's house on Sunday afternoons for fried chicken and nice potatoes and all the fixing. Any of you ever get a smell that takes you back uh, to, to yesteryear? Maybe to your grandparents, uh, maybe to yeah. something you, you remember and it's nostalgic to you, uh, that smell. Uh, it, it's amazing, but uh, doing a little research, uh, our nose can sense over a trillion smells. Wow, is that crazy? 
and uh, 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 they found that it's related to the cranial nerve and it renews itself and, 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 and so in our mind, our mind are, is like little compartments. You know how the, in your attic or in your basement you have all those nice totes from Walmart. They have stowed away in them uh, toys of your kids or maybe your decorations for different seasons or maybe your clothes of different sizes. I don't know but in all those compartments you have them all fixed up and there in those compartments are things that, that, that you have organized. Well your brain is like that. It's full of lots of different compartments and, and they store up memories. Even from before you can remember in, in your life your mind was compartmentalizing things and, and storing them away. And our smells are part of those compartments. And, 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 and you re remember things that, that when you were a kid or uh, things that were important to you or, or moments that, 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 that are great in your life, uh, they may be compartmentalized by a scent or a smell. How amazing is that? Amen. I mean, God's amazing. Uh, uh, you, you think about that. Uh, all you uh, people out there uh, in aromatherapy, uh, uh, did, do you know that, that it's true that, that, that lavender really does soothe you? And that in, in countries like England, uh, they have practitioners who work simply with smells and aroma to help in the healing process? Pretty neat. So our smell is amazing this morning, what it does for us and how it helps us. And so the psalmist said, your garments smell of myrrh and of aloe and of cassia out of the ivory places whereby they have made you glad. I'm talking about a picture of Jesus Christ. And the psalmist is giving us some information. Let me take you back about 14 years ago. You may remember NASA, the sad news of that of, of, of the, the shuttle Columbia, that when it came back into the atmosphere, it, it blew up, it crashed. But on, inside of, of that uh, shuttle, they were doing an experiment. It was being uh, uh, funded, it was being done by a company called IFF, uh, International uh, Fragrance and uh, flavors and fragrance. And uh, you may say, Brother Seville, I've never heard of IFF. It really doesn't matter in the scheme of things. But, but, but let me jar your, 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 your mind. And maybe you've heard of some fragrances such as uh, uh, Hugo Boss or Givenchy or White Diamonds, Eternity, Armani, Polo, uh, and so forth. You've probably heard of those. They're all owned by this parent company called IFF, International Flavors and Fragrances. And what they decided they were going to do, it had been done before, but they were trying to do it in a new and a different way. They were trying to create a new and an exciting fragrance. And this fragrance uh, would simply be out of this world. So they sent some, some roses. If any of you know this, I'm not familiar with roses. But they took some Jenny O mini roses and they sent it to outer space in, in the shuttle Columbia. And while they were in outer space, where it was away from that of gravity, they had the astronauts extract oil that would come from these roses. They found that before when it was done, that, that, that the chemistry and the makeup of these roses were simply different than that of roses that were bound by the, the, the law of gravity. And so uh, when, when the, the space shuttle Columbia was coming down, they had already extracted the oils. They had already had it ready for, for this company to take and produce a fragrance that was out of this world. But because of, uh, of the great loss and lives and research and things that was done when Columbia exploded, they no longer could produce a fragrance that was out of this world. Amen. But can I tell you this morning that there is a fragrance that is already produced that is out of this world. His name is Jesus. Amen. I want you to get a smell of him this morning. I want you to smell the aroma of a risen Savior. And so in the next few moments, let's look at this. Amen. I want to appoint you to the garments of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The psalmist once again said, All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia. 
out of ivory places, whereby they have been, uh, they, they have made thee glad. See, when we look at the resurrection, the story uh, 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 that, that, that it's told of, uh, of those that went to the tomb and those that were there, they could tell the story of spices. They could tell the story of that which was placed on Jesus. And so when we look at this Old Testament, it's pointing to the direction of a risen Savior uh, that, that is full of good news and uh, full of sweet fragrance. Jesus, He stepped out of ivory places. He stepped out of heaven, if you would, to come and dwell among mortal man. And when we look at that baby, that nativity that's sitting in the corner back there, we look at that baby, Jesus Christ, who came out of ivory places to come and dwell among the monks of just mortal man who was sinful, but for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Amen. Can we get the fragrance of the only begotten Son who loved us this morning, who gave His life for us. Amen. Who gave us a hope that we would not perish, but that we would live and have everlasting life in Him. Get a fragrance of the Savior this morning. Amen. He loves you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. I, 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 uh, I, many years ago, and uh, I, 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 I ran into a person uh, frequently because of uh, of, of, of job. Uh, and every time I'd run into them, Sister Tina, uh, they would say, uh, 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 I know that you can smell me, and I, I, I could smell them in a good smell. Let me just say this. Do you know every individual has their own distinct smell? Every one of you have your own distinct smell. Smell Jesus. He has his own distinct smell. But this person, I, I enjoyed running into them because they worked in a candle company where they would put fragrance in the candles. And so every time I saw them, they were smelling like something different, Sister Jan. But it was an aroma that was wonderful. It was a great smell because they had been where the aroma was. Can I tell you this morning that if we could get into the room, of Jesus Christ, we would leave here and the world would smell a sweet Savior upon us. Amen. 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 Sister Tina, you remember when John and I actually worked at the onion factory? How do they smell when they come home? It was horrible. They had been working around those onions. They had been working around the onions all day. And you knew where, when they come off work where they had been. They had been in the onion factory. How many of you have ever smelled a skunk before? Uh, maybe you didn't even see it, but you knew it was around because you smelled it because of the fragrance. Amen. If we could get in the presence of the Savior this morning. Amen. If we could do our work in the presence of Jesus. Amen. If we could be there. Even if no one else sees Jesus. If they could just smell Him upon the aroma of our life. Yes. Amen. Of the fragrance of the garments of the Savior. Let's look at these three fragrances this morning. Jesus was no stranger to myrrh. The writer writes and he said, all oh, your garments smell of myrrh. He was no stranger with myrrh, Sister Jenny. The psalmist started out, he says, my heart is, 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 is it's a good matter that's in my heart. I speak of things which uh, I, I, I have made, touching the king. My tongue is the pen uh, and I'm ready to tell the story. You know what? Could we have good tidings this Christmas because we heard good tidings of great joy? Amen. Amen. Could our tongue be the pen that tells the world what we have been in the presence of the Savior? And so here it is, Jesus, no stranger to myrrh. You find that it was the third gift that was given to him by the wise men, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Uh, we find that on the cross of Calvary, he was given myrrh that was mixed with wine and, and, and it was used uh, as well to prepare the body of, of, of the Savior. It seems like Jesus' ministry began with myrrh and it ended with myrrh. And so when we look at myrrh, you'll find that itself it is something that is very sweet to the smell, but if you would ever taste it, it's very bitter. And have you ever do that before? 
you look at me and you're like, man, that smells good. I, I just want to take it. And you taste it and it's, wow, it's terrible. It's bitter and sour. And, and the smell and the taste just doesn't seem to align with one another. And so that's what it is with myrrh. It smells wonderful, but to taste it, it is bitter. I, in fact, myrrh is it's probably one of, uh, of the, the trees that, that, that you can get cinnamon from, but it's an adulterated cinnamon. And oftentimes they'll take myrrh and they'll com combine it with pure cinnamon to kind of dull the flavor of, uh, of that cinnamon that's pure and undiluted in its nature. And so it is from a scraggly tree, a thorny tree, and, and, and it's not anything that can be considered beautiful at all. It's ugly, it's thorny, it's scraggly, uh, uh, but when it's pierced, but when it's pierced, it becomes a beautiful smell. Wow. Wow. From the wounded side of the mercury, there comes a gum whose fragrance draws into torture. See, some folks may look and say, well, Jesus was just born in the stable. Born with the animals. What is it to be drawn to Him? But when we look beyond Christmas, and we look to Easter, and we see the side of our Savior that's wounded, with the beautiful fragrance that comes out of the wounded side. Do you smell them this morning? I'm not talking about a baby in a manger. I'm talking about a crucified and a resurrected Savior. If we could get the aroma of Him this morning. Amen. The beauty that's in that. And I want to tell you that mercy speaks of His reaching love. Amen. Christ's love is like the myrrh. It reaches the people. It draws people. The scraggly tree, scraggly tree itself, it's not beautiful, but when it's pierced, all oh, the fragrance that draws folks in. Oh, can we have the fragrance of the Savior begin to radiate out, radiate out Miracle Revival Church this morning? And could it radiate out this Christmas? and can it radiate out of our life. Amen. That the love of God, it stretches and it draws people that they know that God loves Him. Do you know at one time, one ounce of myrrh was equal to the equivalent of, of, of one ounce of gold? And that's how valuable myrrh is. And when it's placed in a, in a close place, uh, the fragrance will fill the atmosphere for this reason. That is why it was used for, for, for holy burials. And it's even used in holy worlds today. Amen. Uh, just a little bit can, can overwhelm people. We can have a little bit of Jesus here this morning. Amen. 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 The fragrance Amen. of the Savior. And isn't that like the love of God? Amen. If we would let His love break through just a little bit, the fragrance of His love would overwhelm us. Amen. Paul said, great is the mystery of godliness. How God became man. But why would He do it? You know why He did it? Because He loved us. The fragrance of myrrh reaches far. Uh, but the reach of God's love to all people reaches even farther. Amen. Would you get a smell of the Savior? Would you see that His love is reaching? Amen. It reaches to the depth of sin. It pulls out. Amen. It reaches to, to the lowest pit of, of agony and despair. That is the love of God. It's reaching the morning and it's reaching for your heart amen to draw you and love on you and give you what you need this morning that's the love of god it reaches yeah. Yeah. hallelujah amen the love of god it's like myrrh it is sweet amen christ's love isn't a little but it is a great bit amen it passes all knowledge the Shulamite woman, she described uh, uh, her love in the Song of Solomon. She described uh, it saying, uh, he lives in the mountains of myrrh. You know what she was saying? She was saying, he lives in the sweetest place. Amen. He lives in the place that, uh, that, 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 that is, is overwhelming love. Thank you, Jesus. God lives in the place of overwhelming love. Amen. We sing that song, too high to get over it. 
too wide to get around it. Amen. The love of God, it's overwhelming. It's like the myrrh. Amen. I know that you may have been saved here this morning for 40 or 50 years, but can I tell you that if you've lost sight of the overwhelming love of God, it's time that you breathe in like the myrrh, the love of God, and know that love, God's love is overwhelming in whatever situation you are in in life. Life may change, Sister yeah. Susan, as you said. You may go through situations you don't like, but one thing that is steadfast is the love of God. Amen. Thank you, God, for your love. Amen. Life changes. People come and people go. Situations, they come and go. Financial situations, they change. Health statuses, they change. But the love of God remains steady and overwhelming. The fragrance of the Savior. Myrrh is love reaches. Mm. But he went on to talk about the aloe. When you think about aloes in the Bible, we're often tempted to think about that plant that we have here in North America, that green plant. But the layman, your wife had the hugest aloe vera plant I've ever seen in my life. I mean, huge. Have you ever seen the one Sister Layman? I, I just, I even got, I, I don't know what she did, but she definitely had a green thumb like that. Uh, but 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 it's not that type of aloe actually. It's a uh, it's really an Asian tree known as owl woods or ingle wood. And so you'll find that it really in its nature is kind of viney and uh, 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 it, 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 it was used to entwine folks actually when they passed away. And so it was known for its beautiful grain, but when it was ground. It not only provided a fragrant incense, but it was also used for medicinal purposes. It was found that it could heal anywhere from things that were a skin disorder to heart disease. Now, I'm not here preaching homeopathic medicine. I don't know enough about it. But I'm just telling you that this is what we know about the aloe, that it smelled good, but it also had medicinal purposes to it. Not only is the Savior's love Reaching, but the Savior's love is healing. Amen. Did you get a smell of the Savior this morning? Yes. A whiff of Him and know that He is the healer. You see, His garments, they're drenched with aloe this morning because we desperately need healing. Yes. We're hurt. Hurting hearts, tormented minds, crushed spirits. You think about being sick, and you know what folks want when they're sick? They want a renewed hope. You know what the Savior does when He passes by? Our senses are touched by the smell of knowing that there is renewed hope and there's healing in Him. From our physical bodies to our spiritual bodies to our emotional bodies. Amen. I want you to know that there is healing in the Savior this morning. Amen. He walked upon this planet. You'll find that there were mothers carrying their children. There were fathers carrying their children. There was people whose hopes were strained and their financial status was bad. But when they heard about Jesus passing by, there was a renewed hope in them that there is a Savior and there can be healing. There can be a change. Can I tell you this morning that if we would get the fragrance of the Savior, not as a baby in a manger, but as a risen Savior, that His love is is reaching, but His love is healing as well this morning, that He can heal your body, soul, and mind because He is the great physician. Amen. He can do something for you that no one else can do. Amen. He is the healer. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that this morning. Amen, Heather. I look at you this morning. Almost a year ago, I was in the hospital with you. I didn't know if I'd ever see you again, but God has touched and healed. Yes, thank you. Amen. God is faithful. Sister Susan, we pray diligently for Christopher that God would touch him, and we continue to pray. And this morning, I'm encouraged. He said six weeks without a seizure, and he was having up to how many? Hundreds of them a day, wasn't he? And so God is the healer. Yes, he is. And God is able to heal the 
this morning, from the slightest to the most complicated, from the physical to the emotional and spiritual. He is the healer. Yes, he is. Amen. I want you to know this morning, the Word of God says, Brother Eli, it's not the whole who need a physician. We all need a physician. Yes. Because yes. if you look, you'll find that we are called. Thank you. The third thing is this, is the casting of And that is an evergreen that's found in the mid, the, the mid east. So his love reaches, his love heals. But the third thing I want to look at this morning, found in the cashew tree, is this: is that his love lingers. Sister Jan, from early spring, this tree will bloom, and Brother Walt, it will continue to bloom throughout the spring and throughout the summer, even in the heat of the desert for the desk. It doesn't stop this tree from bloom and the fragrance is there. Thank you, Lord. Do you know what? There is nothing this morning that will stop the love of God because it lingers. Hallelujah. Amen. It lingers. It stays. It doesn't come and visit and go. Yeah. But the love of God this morning, it lingers. Yeah. Amen. His mercy, it's forever. His yeah. compassions, they're unfailing. Yeah. His love and love and kindness, it's everlasting. Uh, it lingers. And so this morning, uh, maybe you've discovered the love of God even as a small child. I, I remember I was raised in church, and I remember the Spirit of God, Brother Eli, dealing with my heart even as a young child, going to the altars, and even feeling the the emotions of and crying when I didn't understand Sister Rachel. Uh, God was working, but I felt His love. There was a confidence. And now days later, His love still lingers. His love lingers. The Bible says that early, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, that Mary and the other woman, they made their way to the tomb. And in their weary arms, they held canisters of spices. The Father prepared the Lord's body for burial. But they came to the tomb, and it was open. And it was empty. If Sister Beth would come to the piano, <coughs> Austin Miles was asked to write a song that would bring hope and rest and comfort. With the challenge, he began to think about Mary Magdalene. And how that she was lost because the tomb was empty. What have they done with my Lord and Savior? Where is he? Sister, where did they take him? Just tell me. Put yourself in the place of Mary Magdalene. Where is he? He saved me from a terrible life. He gave me hope. He gave me healing. He was my friend. He was a lot of He was my master. It's a terrible trip that you play. Where is he at? I am sifting through grief. Where is he? She saw what she presumed to be the gardener. Can you tell me what they've done with my Savior? He spoke and she said, Oh, yeah. It's you, Jesus. She didn't recognize him at first. But Father, she recognized him. Rabonia. So Austin Mao said the song that he could write that brings hope and comfort is this. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. And the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God exposes. He speaks, and the sound of His voice, well, it is so sweet. The birds hush their singing, and the melody that He gave to me within my heart is ringing. I stay in the garden with Him, though the night around me be falling. But He bids me go through the voice of love. His voice to me is God. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. 
and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. He's the lily of the valley. Would you smell him? He's the rose of Sharon. Would you allow your senses to be open to his aroma? The fragrance that he left behind. The fragrance that he leaves behind is a fragrance of a second chance. Wherever you're at this morning, God gives second chances and third chances and fourth chances. That's the fragrance. His love is reaching. His love is healing. His love is lingering. Would you allow the